powered by Covenant Christian Center. When he says the word preached did not profit them, it's because the word didn't get on their lips. Then you will understand what Moses said to Joshua. This book of the law I've given to you must not depart out of your mouth. If you're going to be able to do signs and wonders, you must hear yourself declare the word of God that fits the situation. That is how faith is generated on the inside. That's the most important thing. All right? What are you saying out of your lips? Uh, so a person can know we can preach to a person and talk about the protection of God, talk about the blessings of God, uh, talk about, you know, the, the abundance, talk about all of that. But what are the words that are coming out of the lips of that person? You say, well, nothing is happening like that. Now you listen to what that person is hearing themselves say. They now start talking. They say, well, you know, things are very tight in this country right now. Now they've heard somebody else say that God can bless you. But what they are saying about their life is things are tight right now. Uh, that's why the Roman centurion said, speak the word only and your servant, which means if you speak, the only thing you hear is the word of God. So he said, take heed. That hearing is talking about is what you hear with your inner ear. It's only when you say something that you hear it with your inner ear. Listen, I can block my ears and I can stop sound from coming. You can put on a stereo and I can block my ears and I won't hear what this person is saying. But if I block my ears and I say, in Jesus' name, I can never stop myself from hearing what I say. If you put your ears, your hand in your ears now, the sound of your words gets amplified. So there's the outer ear and there's the inner ear. And what he's saying, the inner ear is controlled solely by what you say. The outer ear, and it says faith comes by what you hear with your inner ear that is directly controlled. So it says take heed what you are hearing with that inner ear. The measure to which you hear, all right, is the measure of progress you have in your life. The measure to which you are declaring certain things. You understand what I'm saying? So if you are saying something, for example, somebody is going through a challenging situation and then they make up their mind, I will never talk about this situation. I will never hear myself say to myself that I'm going through a difficult time. Let me tell you, they will break through. I will never repeat it. So I will never let myself. All I will hear myself say is that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thou art with me. He has prepared. That is all you are hearing there. You know what happens? You start acting according to what you are hearing. Which means, are you following what I'm saying here? Do you know you can never hear yourself declare the joyful sound of victorious word of God and we will ever see you in a mood that is sorrowful? It is impossible. You cannot come out and be declaring the word of God to yourself and you are walking like life, it can never happen. You can be walking like this if you've heard people preach it. But and what you are saying in your own life is that things are difficult, things are hard. You know, I might, my, my might not make it through. But listen, if what you are hearing, it, don't let Satan trick you into saying what you know you shouldn't say. Oh, well, you know, uh, somebody treated you wrongly. If you never hear yourself tell yourself about it, that thing will take no root in you. Just by discussing with somebody else. Well, you know what this person did to me? Terrible guy. Now your inner ear is picking it up. Are you following what I'm saying here? If all you are declaring is the love of God that is on the inside of you, and somebody comes to meet you and tells about what somebody did, the power of the love of God will push that thing away. Because that is what is controlling your life. Do you understand what I'm saying here? So you want to have mastery, it means never hear yourself say anything apart from what God's word says. Particularly when you are in a situation, always quote the appropriate. Now, look, look at what it says in verse 16. But they have not all done what? Obeyed the word, the gospel. Now, why did they obey it when they heard it? Because we know from James that we put bits in horses' mouth that they might do what? Obey us. Which means in a way to get, and we turn about the whole body, the way to get people to obey something is that the thing must go into their mouth. And the minute the word you preach gets on the lips of people and they start declaring it, then that word starts regulating their life. If they just hear it with their outer air 
and they never put it on their own lips, then it will never produce anything within their lives. So Paul said, you know what we're talking about? We are saying your advancement in Christianity is the degree to which you speak the word of God. Full stop. That's all he's saying. The degree to which, look, I can tell you. Someone says, well, I've been praying about something. I, I've been trying to get my healing. I've been praying about something. Get the person into a conversation. Just try this. Just say, so what did the doctor say about it? Well, the doctor said, I, I cannot. That's what's stopping it. It's because when you hear, when you repeat what the doctor says, your heart picks it up. Botswana is the country with the lowest divorce rate in the world. In fact, in some places there, it is unheard of that people have a divorce. They went to check. They found out that in the native Botswana language, the word divorce doesn't exist. So, nobody has ever said in the native language of Botswana, divorce. If you are preaching there and they're trans doing interpretation and you say, well, they divorced, they will say what? Well, they will stop. So, they have never heard themselves say anything like divorce because that word is non existent. And when you have never heard yourself say it, it can never get into you. So, let me tell you what Satan simply does it's not difficult. Get them to watch a movie and get them to talk about the movie casually and let them hear themselves. Talk about the atrocities in the movie. It gets into their heart. Full stop. With that, we can start regulating their body. Even if they say it in a negative way. That's why, you know, when people do all these things, when they want to do mass, all this point, and, uh, the strategy that they operate, sometimes you don't even know what they're doing. In America, there was a time they were going for presidential election. They were throwing things into the, into, the, into the press that was not really accurate. But they were doing it. There was a campaign. And the guy was saying things, you know, it's outlandish things. And he would come out and he would say that, listen to what he said. He was, they, were talk, they were debating on abortion. Now, that's a debate, you know. I'm, 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 but they were debating on abortion. Well, uh, which is a debate in America. And this guy said this kind of statement. He said, listen, that the woman's body isn't this isn't this crazy? How can an educated person say this? That a woman's body is designed to reject anything that is not supposed to come in. So even if she's raped, if that child is not from God, the body will reject it. I mean, how can you say that kind of thing? But you know, he made that provocative statement for people to start talking about it. So everybody will start talking about it in their offices. By doing that, he's bringing abortion back into the consciousness that's all they want. Which means that they want to make that thing a moral issue in America. So the way to do it is say something that is outlandish that people make people talk about it. And when they start talking about it, it gets back into the system of people. That's why they said that Dov Hitler used it. If you lie, they say lie big. So long as people are discussing the lies, after some time people start believing it. No matter how outlandish it is. Once you hear yourself start saying something, once you start talking about something, listen, somebody else failed. You start talking about the failure of somebody, you are bringing that failure into your life. He said, speak the word only and my servant shall be made whole. Some negative thing happened to somebody, what you should simply say is a thousand will fall on my left, ten thousand will come on my right, it shall not come near me. That's what you say. So he said, look, this faith comes by, so he said, he that works miracles, the way they are producing the miraculous is by what they are hearing themselves say. Everybody is hearing the preacher, but the distinction, which means everybody listen to Moses, why did Joshua and Caleb excel? Because Joshua and Caleb put what they heard and saw on their lips and made it enter into their heart. That's how they started producing it into their life. That's the thing. Jesus said, if you abide in me, and the appropriate part of the scriptures, and at, at a point I was struggling mentally because everything, I want everything to be purely scriptural. What I say, even though if I know this is true, I want it to be purely scriptural. So I was looking at this quantum. I said, I have to find some. So when I was studying, I saw that this thing is not an arithmetic progression, it's a geometric progression, which is not just a law of increase, but multiplication. 
So I said, okay. Now, let me find the word multiply in the scriptures. Where God said, I will multiply you. It is, they are powerful. Then I even saw that the beginning of the covenant. This is what God told um, Abraham. This is what he said. He said, my covenant shall be with thee. Between me and you. And this is the result. He said, I shall multiply you exceedingly. He said, therefore, change your name from Abraham to Abraham for a father of many nations. What he promised were quantum leaps. What he promised were geometric progressions in the life of his people, which means multiplication. That is the covenant that we have. But have you ever heard yourself declare that I will multiply you? Have you ever heard yourself? Listen, that's how the word works. Have you ever heard yourself? Some people say, well, I give. Why? I don't, I'm not getting back. Have you heard yourself? Say to yourself and declare out of your lips that I give and it is given unto me. Press down, shaken together and running over. Do men give into my bosom? Have you heard yourself say it? Or do you give and what you really believe is that you are doing it because you just love God and you know there's no return but I just do it out of the love of God. I'm not, I'm not really into, into this seed thing and harvest of your seed. I just love God. You know, now, now somebody can preach that to you and that's what you believe and that's what you're saying. I just, what, what are you talking about? God said inside his word that God loves a cheerful giver and he will cause all grace to abound towards you that you having sufficiency in all things. Even Jesus Christ and Paul, when he was teaching, first of all, he said concerning giving and receiving. He said, he that soweth sparingly shall do what? Reap. Which means it is concerning giving and receiving. It has to be clear there. Jesus came. And the Bible says God so loved the world, he didn't just give any out. That he gave his only begotten son for a reason. Jesus said, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. Now this cross we are going to, is, there is a strategy behind it. It abides alone. But when you die, it does what? It is multiplied. So he said, I'm going to die here because we are going to be a return on this investment. Covenant Christian Center. All God tells you is that I will multiply it. When I multiply it, don't consume what I multiply. Multiply your giving also. Multiply the help you give towards humanity. That's what he said. He said, I will multiply. I will multiply. I will multiply. So don't just take it. That's what the logos, that's what the mind of God is saying. Jesus came and said, There is no man on this earth that has given anything for my sake. That hasn't received the hundredfold. Jesus said it. So are those declarations on your own lips? Or is it just, well, what we heard in Sunday school? Is it there? That God hears and answers my prayers because I pray in the name of Jesus. Are you saying it? Are you saying You see, that is what regulates your life. Not what you heard somebody else say. You know, the way we are doing this today, I understand what people are trying to do, but we have to be careful. Because I come up here and I say to you, this week God will be, uh, people say, Amen! But let me tell you, it is the word you hear yourself say that will affect your life the most. Kenneth Copeland back then preached a message, you are the prophet of your own life, which means you rise and fall to the level to which you make personal declarations. If you have no confidence, that's why, you know, if you don't declare those things about yourself and to yourself, you know what happens? You believe it can happen for somebody else, but it can't happen for you. Do you get what I'm saying? Uh, they say, well, can God, for example, let's take this now. If we, if we ask you, I, I, I mean, God blessed Isaac the same year he received the hundredfold. You say yes. 
If I say, if I say now, in the year of famine, Isaac received 50 fold, you say, no, Pastor, stop. It's a hundred fold. Listen, it's a hundred fold. You argue with me. It's a hundred fold. One hundred. Now, listen to what I'm saying. One hundred. Because you've heard it preach. Now, but if somebody comes to meet you, and let's assume you are earning three million naira per annum now, and they said this year, with all that is going on in this country, by the end of this year, you will be earning three hundred million. We want to say wait. <laughs> From three million, do you get what we're saying here? Now, I can tell you some people in the body of Christ that if they tell you that they are going to advance a hundredfold, you say it can happen. Do you get what I'm saying here? You believe it can happen for them, but for you, you know why? You have never heard yourself say a hundredfold is coming to you. Never. You believe if you carry the sick to some people and they lay their hands, they will recover. You've never heard yourself say, if I lay my hands on the sick, they shall recover. Never. You've, you can carry someone and say, signs and wonders follow these people. You've never heard yourself say, these signs shall follow them that believe. You're a believer. That's why it says, he that worketh miracles among you, how is he doing it? They are hearing something. They are hearing multiplication. When there's crisis on the outside, they are hearing a thousand shall fall on my left. From 2 a.m. to 5 a.m., they are hearing a thousand will fall on my left, 10,000 on my right. It shall not come near me. It's only with my eyes will I see the reward of the wicked upon them. So when they come out in the morning, there's confidence. As young people say, they have the swag. You cannot have somebody declare the word of God two hours to themselves every day. Look sad. Never. No demon can rest on the shoulder of that person. It's not possible. Not possible. When I was growing up as a Christian, one day I went for full gospel business fellowship in the Bible church. And I heard a testimony. And was talking about, you know, then people used to talk, talking about the spoken word of God. And then there was a woman that had a problem. I think it was in a marriage. I think it was, it was, it was, I think it was sexual, some, some funny problem she had. And she took a scripture. And all scripture has life by the breath of God. She took a scripture that fitted her situation. And she said she kept declaring it, declaring it. That after some time, one day while she was declaring, her eyes opened into the realm of the spirit. And she saw two monkey-like creatures, black, sitting on her shoulder. That when she said those words, they were struggling. This time they jumped off and ran out of her house said and she never found that habit inside her again she kept declaring the word of God Bible says listen all things are possible to the man that believes what's the secret to that to the person that hears that's why the woman with the issue of blood the Bible says she heard G of Jesus then she did what said that's why Zechariah, the angel said, you mustn't talk. If you talk, you will hear the negative thing and it will block it from coming to pass in your life. So what do ask somebody? Why is the blessing not flowing in that dimension? What are you saying to yourself? I said, well, you know, I just have these repeated headaches every time. I've been having these things for the last 18 years. You're looking for sympathy from somebody. Yeah, they can stay. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? I uh, says, well, you don't really know how I am. Go and ask people in my school. They know me. This is the way I talk. In other words, what the Bible is saying is what the Bible is saying. This is the way I talk. Everybody that knows me knows that this is how I behave, that I'm a disorganized person. Everybody. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying here? Is what you hear yourself say. And the degree to which you will advance is the degree. So, here's what we're going to do. We must do this next two weeks. Listen. If you are pregnant and all you are hearing during your pregnancy, someone comes to meet you and they talk about someone that lost their child, don't repeat it. 
If you read somewhere, you know people put all kinds of funny things on Facebook now. Somebody gave birth to a child that was deformed. Don't tell the next person next to you. Have you seen this? Do you get what I'm saying? Is the promise God has given to you of how your child will be, that's the only thing that will come out of your mouth. Are you following what I'm saying here? You say that over and over and over and for the nine months, that is what you are declaring. You know, after some time, you will go past that place into the life of that child in the future. And even before the child comes out, you will, God will have shown you promises. Because when you exhaust the level, he shows you more glory. Promises concerning, and you start saying that. Look, your child, I don't, this is my son. Some people, people around know that you have a stubborn child. That's the problem. You are saying it. The discipline is that the boy behaved like he was stubborn. But you look at the word of God. Are you following what I'm saying here? Yeah. God has promised you nothing that will be deformed shall come out of you. So you can't be like this. Keep saying that and hearing yourself. That's all. No matter how the business seems to be going, hear what God hear. Do you get what I'm saying here? Yeah. Look, if you do business it didn't work out the deal didn't work out the way you, you feel down I lost that deal you go back home your shoulders are like this and then you start repeating it to people I lost the deal I lost the deal I lost the deal get promises from God and declare those things so many times to yourself that that weight lifts and you are back excited you lost the deal but it's not in your consciousness it's not on your lips what is on the inside of you is the promise of do you get what I'm saying? That's the discipline. That's why they were not getting results. My dear friend that prayed for 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 who to score goals for his team to win, he should show us what she has been saying. You know, sometimes when we pray, it's just like when we've done everything we know to do. Let us see whether this one will work. Are you from there? Like someone, they wanted to pray about something in the office. He said, has it come to that now? Let's first think through. It's when, <laughs> it's when we've done everything. We don't know what to do then. Okay, let's just see whether God has something to say about it. Are you following me? The exceeding great and precious promises. I, I, now, this is the labor. The Bible says labor to enter into rest. That you don't fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Is that means saying the word should be on your lips? Okay, okay, let me close with this. Look at Romans 10. I knew there was something. That's what I couldn't get off. Romans 10. Let me just read this to you. Uh, and, and shoot. Romans 10 here. Verse, verse 5. For Moses described the righteousness that is of the law, that the man that doeth those things shall live in them. But the righteousness that is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not who shall ascend or who shall descend. What saith it? Verse 8. The word, that word there is logos, is nigh thee. In thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the rema of faith that we preach. He said, what are we preaching? What we are preaching is that rema is what produces faith. Faith is what produces results. What is the rema? Get the logos on your lips and it becomes a rema. Which means speaking the appropriate scripture for a situation becomes a rema and by that it produces in you the substance of the things that you're hoping for so one who ask a man who is in business or your career what are you saying into yourself every day i say well you're married what are you saying about your marriage is it what you watched on the movie is it what happened yesterday in the kitchen you understand this? Are you following? You see, all Satan wants to do is to get you. Which anyway, to talk about what is going on in your life, what you are doing with your hands, in a way that is negative, then he can control you. And we've seen. And this is why we're going to do it as a core, look, we, we look, as a core thing inside this church. That the most advancing people 
on earth today will be the people who know this truth and are declaring these things. I know when you say it all the time, the word gets into you. When you, want to, when you say something wrong, the word inside you tells you, stop that thing. All right, just tells you. It nudges you. Stop talking like that. Uh, everything is so bad. Everything is just so bad. I mean, I, I don't know what to do. All right, you got me somebody for cancer. I just don't know what to do. Everything has scattered in my life. That's what you hear. In fact, that's where the scattering starts. Christian Center. Join Pastor Koju Oyemade every Sunday. First service at the Yaba Center, number 400 Harbert Macaulay Road, Yaba at 6.30 a.m. Second and fourth services at the Covenant Place, Igomu, Lagos, beside National Theatre at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Third service at the Island Center, Lagoon Restaurant, Ozumba Mbadiwe, Victoria Island, Lagos at 8.45 a.m and also at the midweek service at the Yaba Center every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Thank you for watching.